And uh, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, okay, you see the screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, and my name is Wuchan, and, uh, and today, uh, Wing and I will give you a presentation with our updates um, to design multicast support on entry. Uh, so uh, uh, after uh, last presentation, uh, we have uh, some new thoughts and uh, more detailed discussion. And uh, so I think it's necessary to have a new one. And uh, we will talk this, this time we talk design in more detail. Okay, let's start. So again, uh, we want to add a new feature gate multicast two, and uh, default will be false. Um, so uh, uh, we want to um, propose a new CRD here uh, to describe uh, the expected uh, multicast traffic. Um, uh, you can see this uh, CRD in the screen, and the uh, uh, user can um, define the multicast group addresses, which are expected to be uh, supporting the cluster, and then use a pod selector to select target pods, uh, which are expected to access the multicast address. Um, multicast group defined in the CID could be uh, IPv4, IPv6, and uh, if it's IPv6 address, the feature gates for those stack should be enabled on, on the cluster. Uh, but we are not planning to uh, support IPv4 uh, in the first version. Maybe we'll talk about this later. And uh, here I want to explain uh, 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 every field in detail. Uh, so, um, M group is uh, here is used to define the targeted multicast group and uh, post letter um, used to select pods which I expect to join the target multicast group. So if no pod letter is configured or no pods could be uh, selected by the letter entry engine will not realize the multicast configuration on node and uh, we will talk about the behavior of entry engine uh, later. So we have external interfaces. Uh, external interfaces in CRD is used to tell entry uh, with which interface the external multicast client or source will communicate with local pod. And uh, uh, local here is used to decide if SNAT is performed on the uh, part to external multicast traffic. So if it's true, it's not, it's not performed. And default value is false. And, uh, and we are not very satisfied with the name here. Maybe you can suggest a better name later. And um, uh, both and, and entry engine and entry uh, controller will watch multicast CRD and uh, uh, do some configuration and we'll expand them in de detail later. So um, uh, for the entry controller part, um, it's really simple. Uh, it watch the multicast CID and the computes which parts are involved in each multicast group. Entry controller uh, leverage um, parts letter to set parts and the right part. Uh, information back to CRT and organize the result by nodes. So the green part I highlight are the information that is written by entry controller. And for the entry engine in the node uh, initialization stage, we want to config it with two commands as we talked before. Uh, entry engine should config OVS bridge to support snooping multicast membership pod. And um, um, for entry engine in the um, 
that your engine to watch the multicast CRD and uh, uh, filter message by the node on which it's located. And uh, it mainly takes uh, care of two type of events. And that is a uh, new multicast group is added or removed from the, from the current node or new nodes and is joined uh, current existing multicast group. Uh, let's talk this event one by one. Um, so um, when new multicast group is added on current node, entry engine adds uh, uh, open flow entry entries on the uh, on the current node as uh, in the you can see in the uh, green lines. Um, so we will use uh, uh, register zero uh, bit index 27 uh, here to identify multicast traffic and uh, uh, which is set in the L3 routing table and it is matched in the L2 calculating table. Uh, so uh, TTL is decreased for multicast traffic in the TTL de decreasing table number 72. It is number 72. And um, note we want to add a new table that is number uh, 111 uh, for multicast traffic forwarding. And um, uh, the matching the this table is multicast group config in CRD. The flow action in this table is uh, uh, a group bucket in the group. Uh, a bucket in the group includes three parts, and uh, you can see the last line. And the uh, first is up the bucket to en entry gateway uh, zero, and um, the support or forwarding packets to the external external. And secondly, you can see you can see actually normal and uh, that is to leverage always as multicast snooping, snooping capability and the forward packet inside OVS bridge. Third is set kernel and output to kernel port IP and uh, for in-camp mode. For no in-camp mode, no additional group bucket is needed. And uh, then you can see the uh, congestion, uh, congestion action in the table uh, 111. And uh, uh, you can see three IPs here, uh, 204 dot, uh, dot zero is uh, all host. And uh, you can see dot two is um, all routers and uh, uh, dot uh, uh, 22 is IGMP uh, version three multicast group. They are allowed by default and the packet packets are forward to uh, normal today's uh, all nodes. As the arm config multicast group traffic will be dropped in. And uh, um, we also want to add multicast routing entry. Uh, according to the um, CRD configuration. And uh, the following is the example for multicast uh, routine entry config on a node. In, the, in this example, uh, ENS192 uh, is configured as external interface in the CRD. And this is the output of uh, IP multicast command. And um, uh, second event one we want to take care of is the uh, when no new when uh, new nodes um, where pods resides on join an existing multicast group. And um, um, Entry engine has different uh, uh, pro progress for the in cap mode and the no in cap mode. And um, 
in the in-time mode, entry engine to update the group bucket when it finds a new node is involved with the group. You can see example as in uh, bucket ID two here. And uh, for the low in camp mode, uh, entry engine adds multicast routing entries uh, on the host to forward the traffic between entry gateway zero and the tra transport interface, which is used for routing power traffic across nodes. Mm. The multicast routing entry is configured once uh, when entry engine from a different node joins to the multicast group at the first time, uh, entry mm, process uh, the multicast routing entry for ports on, uh, on uh, entry process the multicast routing entry for ports on a different node, uh, as soon as the, it does on the external uh, addresses. Here you can see that um, ENS192 is the external interface and the ENS224 uh, is the node transport interface. Um, so no SNAT, uh, we, we support no SNAT uh, uh, as described before in the um, local field in the CRD and uh, it also has an impact on the port traffic across node in the no income mode entry at remote ports IP as multicast source instead of remote nodes IP. And uh, uh, we have some question uh, we had for pre previous meeting and uh, most of them uh, can, can be answered uh, as uh, the topic I mentioned before and uh, there are some discussion before uh, about IGMP proxy and, and market, and uh, uh, we won't use them. And uh, mm, because um, IGMP proxy only support IGMP v1, v2, and downstream interfaces, and IGMP uh, proxy adds multicast not only if IGMP membership report is um, downstream interfaces, and uh, ignore the upstream interfaces. Um, so this might cause local multicast traffic not able to send to external, which we don't want to. Also, um, we, we are not using uh, dynamic multicast router daemon like um, MRouted in the PIMD. And we want to try to configure static multicast routing table using CGO. And uh, for uh, so, uh, do we uh, support multicast for or to external cluster? Uh, the answer is yes, and uh, and uh, we 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 also add a field called external interface in the uh, the CRD we proposed before, and. Uh, and the field is used to tell entry with which interface is the external multicast source uh, or client will communicate with local pod. Mm. And the entry engine will do the, uh, uh, the configuration we mentioned before. And uh, the possibility to use OVS only. And uh, I don't know exactly what the question, but uh, Basically, we, we implement multicast on entry by adding open flow and entries and the, the, uh, on the LVS bridge and the configure multicast routing entries uh, using, uh, using CGO. Mm. Can the multicast source IP be port IP when there is no, no not? The, the answer is uh, simply, uh, simply yes, as we uh, as we mentioned uh, be before in the uh, no in camp mode uh, for the S no uh, for the no S, S no S not support. So uh, here's the answers. 
And uh, next, uh, uh, we have way into uh, have a, a further discussion on this, uh, on, the, on, the, on the approach we have discussed. Hi, Wei. Uh, hello. Um, uh, I think I, I want to introduce some limitations and also issues about the design. And then I think we could start the discussion about the um, design details. Um, I'm not sure if my screen is pointed in the in the zoom. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, firstly, it's for the limitations. Um. So Windows, I, I don't think we will support the Windows multicast in the first revision. Uh, release maybe um with a priority six two or more low, or lower priority. And uh, the thickness for network policy. Um, for current design, we have um, um, enforced the multicast traffic to uh, go through the network policy related tables. But I don't think we have enough policy rules uh, focusing on um, multicast traffic. So um, I, I just mean for the first release, uh, Metcast might not be limited by network policy, but if or not so we want to support network policy on the Metcast traffic, uh, I think it is an open issue. And uh, the con conclusion might uh, um, have some impact on the table design for Metcast. And uh, the third is for the CRD design. Um, we, we, are, we want to use the CRD to um, tell and share what multicast group we are, want, we are wanting to support and uh, what polls are joining the multicast group. Um, some limitation exists that um, the pod in the multicast group is not, is, is not uh, auto discovery but pre configurable. Um, so I think we might uh, introduce the how the in multicast group also discovering in future version, but no for the first version. So I still think CRD uh, to tell the post selector is, is necessary in, in this version. And for the IPv6 multicast, um, actually the IPv6 addresses for multicast group is should be supported in the CRD definitions, but for the traffic uh, side, um, IPv6 should be supported with a priority one, um, maybe the second work, second release for multicast, but, but absolutely not in the first release. And um, these are the limitations we, we know, we already know about the design. And um, then I want to have some discussions about the open issue. Firstly, it's about the CRD. Um, we, we want to know if namespace selector is required to, use to, to be used to select the pause in the CRD. Um, uh, we want to know your suggestions or, or thoughts about it. Currently, we, we didn't uh, um, add it in the study design, but we could modify if it is required. Hey, Wenying, I, I had a question kind of regarding pod selection. Uh, yeah. Have we considered using like a, a pod annotation instead to have a pod join um, a multicast group? I'm asking because let's say I'm someone scheduling pods in a cluster. Maybe I maybe I know that my pods need to join a specific multicast group and it's easy for me to add an annotation to the pod to, to let them join the multicast group. But if I have to go find the CRD and modify it, that means I need to have like permissions to edit the CRD. Um, so maybe it's a bit more convoluted for uh, someone deploying pods to, to the cluster. 
Mm, but if we use the annotation to uh, support polls, um, I, I think for annotation, it should, should um, be ready to support the poll selector. But um, then we should support both annotation and the CRD. I think the, um, it will introduce more work for the Matitax implementation. So, I mean, I agree that we need a CRD anyway, right? Because you need to configure other things like uh, local and uh, and the external interfaces and so on. But um, yeah, I, I, I get, I'm, I'm not totally sure. Uh, I feel like if some multicast groups have been pre-configured and we want to let people scheduling pods like join the multicast groups easily, then an annotation may be easier, uh, but um, yeah, but I can keep thinking about it. So, um, in your opinion, the pod selector should uh, is possible to remove from the CRD and let the user to use annotation to um, allow his pod to join the multicast group, right? Am I right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, Okay, um, I think we could have some thinking about it. Maybe we could support it in the in the version. Um, yeah, when in actually, I, I was also thinking uh, annotation probably sounds better to me uh, for the reason I'm telling said. Okay, got it. Um, for that, actually, I have, a, I have another question. So, so we are saying we don't do IGMP slooping to discover the source port. Uh, sorry, not source port, uh, uh, to discover the receiver. Because I, 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 I remember you mentioned that IGMP slooping. Uh, so if you already enable IGMP slooping, yeah? Yeah, if, um, so we already enable the multicast slooping uh, OS, the um, uh, pod IP should be uh, added to the OS multicast DB catch. Um, but uh, the difficulty is how shall we read the, the DB catch from OS? Uh, maybe using the uh, OS command uh, um, or something like that. Um, Actually, we plan to support it in the next version, but not the first version. That is what I'm, I mean for the part of the discovery. Sure, but if we are saying the first version, we, we use CRD, uh, sorry, CRD or annotation, and the second version we do auto discovery. Yeah. That means it's an API change, right? Um, I feel it's a, I just feel I it's quite a change is much, um, maybe only on the pod discovery. But I, I just feel so we, it's not very simple code to do is allocation or selector. And if I think it will be a discard later, I'm not sure it's worthwhile to do the server we work in the first version. Or in that case, uh, annotation makes more sense, right? Because it's not as big of a change in a way. You don't need to change the CRD. And conceptually, it's kind of like more similar, right? Because it's a point pod joining the group, uh, either through an annotation or by sending a, an IGMP packet that you can capture at the, at the switch. No, I, I think if we use the annotation of the OS auto discovery, we should, choose, we should write the Pod to CRD by entry agents, but for our first re uh, release plan, we, we want uh, entry controller to write the CRD by not entry agents. Entry agent only watches the CRD. If we use the annotation of the OS configuration, we need to allow entry agent to write back to the CRD to to sync, synchronize the post data for formatic cast and uh, I don't know do you know the information and why we need to save the port member to the CRD I think we just need a load member yeah? 
uh, I, I want to display the number of information details in the study status. Yes, things just for debugging purpose. Yeah. Uh, but isn't, uh, can't the controller just watch the pods with that annotation and look at the pod status and just update the CRD directly? You mean the entry agent for watch and the rabbi for the CRD? No, I mean, um, for the CRD status, you can have the entry a controller watch pods, right? And um, yeah. and based, if a pod has a multicast group uh, annotation, uh, you can just update the CRD based on that maybe. Um, anyway, um, if agent uh, um, has has worked to discover the the the, the part of all multicast and the matter of always annotation or always um, multicast DB catch, and agent should write back to the CRD. Maybe then controller don't need to write write anything to, to the CRD if agent has taken over the, the job. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, when you, how about you think a little more about this? I mean, uh, whether it's, 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 it's significant piece of a uh, survey work to do annotation or CRD first. If it's really a, I mean, a, lots of a survey work, I, I would say uh, probably let's consider how to discover from the beginning. Okay. But I, I will let you, you, you write. Another one that um, I put in a few which you differentiate the debugging information and the, the, the inform information required by um, functionality. So if I'm saying the port member only for debuggability, uh, and uh, I personally would ask why why you must do that in the first version. Um, could we start from load member if that is more efficient, it can scale better. Um, if you want to do append debugging information, we can always do later and uh, with some, for example, uh, do some batching or delay to optimize. Right? Um, I think if we want to support NOAA's night on the multicast traffic, um, port address should be included in the CRD status. Otherwise, um, we can't add it to the multicast routes and entries from remote ports. For multicast, I, I don't know people do SNET or not. It sounds a little strange to me. <laughs> If you do S9, uh, what do I mean? You need to, I don't know. Um, I mean, the multicast source uh, show is uh, addressed by not the node address for the post. I, I, I know, but I, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, should we even do S9? Or we should never do S9 for multicast? So you mean the local configuration is actually a fake requirement for multicast. Um, I'm not very certain. <laughs> I I just never know people do S9 for S9 multicast traffic. Maybe I'm wrong. How about let's, let's double check. Uh, we can also check with Eves to see uh, if he see any S9 requirement. Okay. So if uh, no, if, if the local configuration is not required, I think we could don't include the pod, uh, pod details in, in the CRD status. We could only include the node, uh, node information. Sure. Well, again, uh, I'll probably let, let's check with Yves and uh, if you know any information that uh, any other solution support as that for Marikas we can also we can also check. Okay. Uh, I just don't know. Oh and I think it. the the more important use case is no income mode, right? That's what I heard. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Okay. Um for more in for knowing cap mode is um 
a port send the multicast traffic to a port on the different node. Uh, shall we? Do we have net uh, the traffic or, or just no. the way? Of course not. It's no income yeah. of why you do is that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then uh, even for your uh, external external interface, I I feel it's pretty strange in my mind. And I'm not sure. I mean, uh, it sounds like it's, it sounds like not very convenient for user to manually define all the external receivers in the past yeah. use to CRD. Yeah, so I was going to say I, the same. It, it's the same problem we have yeah. for the transport interface, right? In the in the recent PR, where you. Uh, uh, I don't think they are the same. Um, no. In some um, uh, topology, the external interface might be different from the, the transport interface. No, uh, I'm, I'm not saying they're the same. I'm saying that it's kind of like the same problem where we ask the user to to provide the name of the interface and the name of the interface may be different on the different nodes. And so it becomes okay. hard to configure. Okay. Uh, I agree. Sorry, that's... Uh, probably, uh, probably I misunderstood. So the external interface is for sending the multicast traffic to remote. That's why how we call it. Yeah, both sending the multicast traffic to re to external and uh, receiving the medical traffic from the, I see. Uh, external. I see. Okay. And okay. um, then back to so so I don't think the namespace selector is required in the CRD if we uh, decide to support annotation instead of the port selector. Am I right? Yeah, I, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Okay. And the one thing, uh, if you ask me, uh, if we are saying uh, we do no income first, we don't even need CRD or save the member to anywhere. Right? Well, you Only still for need the external interfaces, right? Yeah. Sure, sure. We still mm -hmm. need that, um, but not for maintain the members. Okay. I don't know. I mean, if you ask me, uh, <laughs> Of course, you, you should make a decision since, since you are implementing this. Um, but if you ask me, I have to do the in cap first, since it's uh, because it's simplest and the uh, done require um, many chains in forwarding pipeline. And uh, it also the only required use case we know. And then uh, we can do in cap later. And if you ask me, then uh, I probably will think about auto discovery. I think that's okay. probably more useful for income. Um, okay. Then also my second question about net policy and the medical traffic. Um, I, I want to know your thoughts about a, the requirement existing that so we might have some net policy rules to um, allow our job the medical traffic Oh, now right so now. About to, sorry, good. Okay. Um, I, I mean, um, for network policy and uh, multicast traffic. So you're talking about the, uh, the, the, the multicast IP in the IP block. Is that all? So you mean it is possible that uh, the user add multicast IP into that block? Yeah, I'm just trying to understand what you mean. Uh, so do you mean in the egress rule you have a, a IP block okay. in the two field to be the multicast IP? Is that the case you are thinking about? Yeah. I see. Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, then what about the egress yeah. um, policy rule? It, it, I mean, is it possible that uh maybe we can't use I, I actually i don't know how to use the uh, no, no, for, for ingress rule i don't think we should support multicast ip but i hope our uh ingress policy can st can still cover the multicast traffic what i mean that 
for example, if you have a policy allow port one to port two traffic, then uh, even for the multicast track from port one to port two, it should allow. I think you allow is easy. Just for for the job case, it it should be difficult for I the see. ingress. I see. Yeah. So uh, I want to know is the requirement existing for ingress? But um, by job, you mean what? I mean, uh, you mean uh, the case, for example, uh, we don't allow port one to port two, uh, port two traffic, but you have a Monica traffic from port one to port two, yeah. and you want to drop the traffic. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, I think it should be difficult. <laughs> um, uh, um, okay. Then anyway, um, if if enough policy is possible to um, apply on the medical traffic, so I think we still require the medical traffic to follow our current pipeline. I mean, the package should be pro should be enforced into uh, either the ingress egress table and the ingress tables. Uh, yeah, I think ideally we should cover money cost. But if you're saying uh, it's challenging for the first version, maybe we can do later. Just my personal yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Then, then um, we will um, put the priority for our policy with P1 or P2. I mean, the priority for our policy on my cat. That sounds okay to me, but <laughs> I'm not sure if others have any opinion. Or maybe you should check with you just to make sure his use case can be covered. Oh, discuss it. And then I think I don't have other open issues to discuss. Um, um, I, I want to, to share another point about the uh, medical routing entry configuration. Um, I remember that in the original slide, uh, Jian Jian has asked us uh, if we could support the um, any source in the multicast routing entry. Um, in that email, I have I have written back that um, for the zero address is supported of, uh, by SMC route, but uh, when uh, looking to the Linux routing, multicast routing uh, implementations, I found that we can't use the zero address to instead any source. We have to add uh, the routing entry with every single source address. Um, so um, for the entry agent implementation, we will use the single language to signal to, to watch um, uh, kernel upcall message, I mean the IGMP no catch, which will be sent out from the link kernel when the um, multicast packet is not he is not hitting any existing routing entry. Uh, the message will be sent out to the daemon. The entry agent will catch the message and read the source and the destination of the IP addresses and then add the uh, multicast routing entry into the routing table. Um, this is what we will do for the unknown external addresses multicast. Uh, I, I don't know if I have explained clearly. Yeah, I kind of got what I mean. Uh... It sounds a little strange to me. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, sounds like Lila's kernel want to drop the packet, but you automatically add the entry uh, for any unknown uh, source. I don't think the Linux, want, Linux kernel want to okay. drop it. It is because we don't have added, added any uh, known external address, but we don't know the external addresses from the configurations. So we have to let the link kernel to um, use upcall messages for uh, use upcall messages to, to us to let us 
add, exter add additional route entry. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 not like you lend the source from 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 any other protocol or mechanism. So actually, you lend the source from a uh, uh, lookup uh, miss notification from the kernel, right? Yeah, um, it is different from the protocol dynamic learning. It is from the kernel. Do you, do you know any other solution doing that? Like any multicast router or I don't know. I think other tools is using the protocol learning and uh, they should to, should uh, learning the uh, the IGMP message or team message or some other multicast related protocol messages and learn the source and the destination and then add the routing entry. I think the final um, action is, is the same. The um, difference is where we get on the, how we get the, the message. Yeah, I think the the problem is that we don't move the federal inter interface to the OS bridge uh, because for IGMPS bridge, uh, I don't think you need to lend the external source, right? The bridge don't care source. You just manage yeah. the local members and then us do the switching to the, to, for the traffic to local receivers. Mm. Yeah, all right. Okay, I don't know. Yeah. Um, if that way works, maybe so. Orange, I saw the uh, in the worst case we can use TC uh, to redirect traffic, but then uh, yeah, then it will be a little different from routing, just like some yeah. uh, some other way to intercept the traffic. Uh, then I, I want to know if there are some other questions. Um, about this design. So if we don't have a port select, do we do we do we do we even do we still need a CRD? Sorry, we, we use CRD for what? Um we originally want to use a CRD to have the multicast group address and uh, the external addresses to communicate with um the external uh, multicast source or clients. And uh, uh, maybe no, no, maybe local is, is not um, only the two usages. For the external interface, do you assume uh, each model has group will use different external interface? You mean node has different names of the external address uh, interface or uh, optimized? No, I, I, I'm trying to understand the internal interface is per group or per node. Uh, per group. Okay. But do we need to be that flexible? <laughs> if it's per node, then uh, we just add a parameter in the config map, just like a transport interface. And we can even uh... reuse transport interface. Hmm. Uh, okay. I mean, that sounds you much simpler. That's a group. Um, then the CRD is only for the medical group. And you don't need the CRD, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Why need the CRD uh, for? That, um, I, I want to double confirm that if a pod has joined two or more multicast group, then it has to use multiple annotations. Okay. Again, uh, I don't know if you want to do annotation. I still, I'm still thinking, uh, probably you can still do one annotation with multiple groups, but I was still thinking if we do auto discovery, we don't need any of this, right? Um, for the, um, for auto discovery, um, actually, it's, it's because we we don't have the 
uh, update interface from OAS about the Multicast DB cache. So we have to uh, loop and uh, query. We query the Multicast DB cache in in a loop. Then um, actually, it is what I don't want to use. So I want to. Well, I want to leave some time for OS to have to provide some more generic functions to get the get the configuration. Um, but if we implement it in the first release, um, we have to use the loop to, to query it. Okay, uh, I'm not really. I, I don't know how this handle monocast much. Um, but maybe you already did some investigation. Uh, maybe let me also check with other guys to, to see if they know. Um, okay. But if the first version is no in cap only, uh, again, you don't need any of this. Okay. I'm, I'm, I am just trying to avoid any, you know, Throw away work. Uh, that's why I'm trying to avoid. So, yeah, I kind of prefer to do whatever we are more certain. Okay. How about let's think about it more? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how much we want to discuss in this meeting. <laughs> ah, sorry. Um, it looks like taking much time. Um, Maybe we could have an additional discussion. No, uh, it's probably, probably just me ask too, too, uh, ask too much questions. Um, Antonia, um, maybe I could stop share and uh, if you don't have other questions, guys. Uh, thanks for the presentation, Wenjing, Wenjing and uh, Roshan, and uh, yeah, for the discussion. Uh, please send me the um, a PDF of the slides so I can uh, put it on the entria.io website after the meeting. And uh, yeah, we have about 10 minutes left. So um, anyone wants to bring up any topic? All right, to quote uh, Salvatore, uh, going once, going twice, going thrice. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. Uh, thanks again for the presentation, Wenning and Roshan. And uh, I'll see everyone in two weeks. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good one.